Hey guys, welcome back to another Redbeard Outdoors episode. This is Redbeard coming to you from the future after a few months of the lights being installed. Um, and I can assure you that I haven't had any water leaks yet. Um, so if that's one of your biggest concerns, um, so far so good, but I took precautions to prevent that. So you'll see that in the upcoming video. But I wanted to uh, kind of get on here and explain a few things. I'm not an expert at this. I don't claim to be an expert. I know how to do uh, wiring pretty well. So um, I searched all over the internet for this possibility of finding a, a video like this of someone wiring up their trailer and putting a lot of lights on it. Um, and I couldn't find anything. So there's nothing out there. So this may be the first video of its kind. So bear with me. There was a lot of a learning. Um, you know, I'm not an expert at this, so I had to learn as I went. So how I installed everything worked for me and my trailer. It might not necessarily work for you guys. So you have to take that into consideration when you're doing this project. So if anything goes wrong on your guys' end, that's on you guys. I'm just simply giving you the, the idea or the tools or the mindset to try to maybe complete this project on your own if you want to try it. Um, I will say this project is very, very difficult. Um, it wasn't easy. It took many days, many hours. So if you're not comfortable with drilling holes in your trailer, wiring, uh, waterproofing, uh, water damage to your living quarters, stuff like that, I would suggest that this job is probably not for you guys. Um, but go ahead and watch the video, see what you think, and proceed forward at your own caution. I don't want to guide you into doing something that doesn't work for your trailer or may cause a lot of issues or maybe even water damage. So like I said, that that's all on you guys. It's for you guys to figure out. I'm just giving you the mindset and idea and my process of how I did it to my trailer. So without any further ado, I tried to make this video as short as possible, but uh, it is a long video. Um, there's a lot to go over. I have a stock combo, Lakota living quarters. Um, and I started back in the stock area, was able to remove some access panels and proceed forward down the front of the trailer to the nose of the trailer. So we're gonna start right into the video in the stock area and kind of what happened in there and then proceed forward around the trailer. All right guys, I'm not filming everything, but there's a reason for that because if I did, this video would take forever. But I wanted to let you know that first off, um, if you have a stock combo or I don't know, most, most horse trailers, they, they tend to rib it instead of provide with screws. On a previous lighting project where I set up all my light bars outside, I uh, drilled all these out and replaced them with screws. So I had to drill out all the rivets with a small drill and then I came in with a bigger screw. So that's kind of what's going on there. So that's gonna be hard to get to if you don't have a setup like that. Um, so just a heads up on that. Uh, next, the running light wire is the green one and it actually stops right here and dips down and goes down into this channel right here. Um, so it doesn't keep going. So I had to uh, jerry rig uh, some more wiring and then um, I got some wiring on the way already from Amazon, some 16 gauge wiring. Something to note is it's very important not to over size drill your hole for the light right there um because if you do water will get in so you need to be very cautious you need to be very careful and gentle with the, the rubber grommet and make sure not to oversize your your drill hole um that light right there i oversized it and it Rain last night and water got in. So um, I'm going to start making my holes. I'm going to start making my drill holes a lot smaller. But that's the only one that did it. I When I drilled that, it kind of, I kind of 
beveled and kind of over drilled it a little bit so I'm gonna start keeping them a lot tighter uh, for some reason Lakota uses this terrible sticky tape and they put it over the wiring right here like so I tore all that off and replaced it with like this zip tie strap right here uh, way cleaner way better here's what one looks like you can run zip ties through them. Pretty cheap off Amazon, but um, as you can see, I cleaned this up a lot uh, and got the wires tucked away because these wires can really fall out and they're really hard to tuck up and get out of your way. So uh, I just want to make things a little bit easier, but I didn't do that until after I was pretty much done with all the projects. So wanted to give you an update on the back. Um, from what I've noticed, the the running lights start right here, and they go all the way around. And so far, I've been able to connect up to the front of them over here. Let me show you where I got some things screwed in. I replaced the rivets right there. And have those screwed in. So, yeah, I just wanted to give you an update. Finish up with this side today and the other side. I'll get to it here in a second. Uh, then front lights are really dim and need replaced. I don't know if you can tell in the video, but if you look at these, look at those. A lot dimmer, but that's been replaced all those new that one's been replaced that's been replaced and off camera i replaced all those because they're really dim and they're actually going out some of them were out and then that one's been replaced and so has that one and then these are all new across the top up here and as you can see the dim front ones I will replace those when I work my way up the side of the trailer and get to the front all right guys this is the harder part of the project so I'll try to film a little bit more here but uh, I measured over three and a half feet uh, I chose three and a half feet because of my spacing on my trailer. You guys could probably choose whatever you want. This part you're going to have to be really careful. I like to use this pilot smaller drill bit and start my hole. And then I go in with a bigger one. And then I go in with this one. So this, this one goes up to three quarter inch. The thing about these is you kind of have to hit it with all sorts of different angles to get it to catch. And then once it catches, it usually goes pretty smoothly. But the first part's the, the toughest part to getting it, getting it to catch. There's the hole. Uh, no signs of wire or anything in there. There's some plywood way back there. I would say you definitely want to be careful of these rubber garments. You don't want to damage these at all. So make sure you're very careful with these. Um, a nice little trick. I found this out the hard way, but if you take them off, you can put them on a lot easier. And I usually just take this flathead, and pop it in there, and then I kind of spin it around like that. And then you can take your light and you can pop it right in there. But I'm not going to do that right now. We're going to do that later.
So I measured three and a half feet here. I measured an inch, an inch and three quarters. And how I came up with that inch and three quarters is because I checked the existing lights and that's where they were. So the center of the light is at three foot six spacing at and an inch and three quarters up off of this gutter rail right here. Next, I'm going to take this wire and feed it to the stock area. my wife is going to tell me it made it through. Okay, that was a little complicated because there was a wall in the U-channel on the mid-tack that I had to deal with. Once we got past that, it was pretty easy. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and drill this other hole. I'll show you the wall here in a little bit, but I need to get a wire stretch from here to here before I close this one up. So, um, let's get this hole drilled. So if you're wondering why I vacuum so much, is it makes a huge mess drilling this out and the shavings get everywhere and they're hard to clean up. And the more the wind blows, the more they get everywhere. So I usually try to vacuum them up pretty quickly. Um, Plus, I'm really trying to keep it out of the awning. I don't want a bunch of shavings in the awning. Now it's time to repeat the process. I think it's gonna be a lot easier. Fingers crossed. Without that wall in the way, I think it'll, it'll go through here a little nicer. If you get too crazy with it, it actually ends up on top of the roof. Yeah, got a little fiberglass glass insulation there. So, went on top of the roof. I'm gonna make a circle. I had these three-way connectors that unfortunately they don't fit through the hole. I didn't think about that. So I'm going with a plan B and it's unconventional. You guys might think I'm crazy, but I'm going for it. First things first. Need to get this rubber garment. Let's go ahead and install it. should probably always be step one. Step two, depending on the lights that you buy, make sure you check negative is white, positive is black. It's a pretty weird coloring combo there. So what I'm gonna do I'm going to take white to black because I'm going to make black negative, red positive because that's normal when you're dealing with a battery. You're 
usually dealing with red and black. So red, red positive, black, negative. So I'm going to take white to black. I'm just going to think of a, a tuxedo, a black and white tuxedo. I'm going to take black to red. So here goes nothing. Actually, got those to shrink down around the smaller wires, which I'm glad it did that. And now what I usually do, because I don't, that gun doesn't get hot enough, but I usually take a flame to this, uh, this soldering part and it'll melt this soldering part around all the wires. There's quite the breeze through here, so hopefully this doesn't take forever. There, it started running, started melting. Shrink around those wires. You don't want to overdo it because then you're going to mess up your, your fitting, so. So, I need to go hook up to the power source over here and then we're going to test the light before we install it all, all up here. So let's go do that. Okay, very confusing, but I, had this black wire lying around and I ran it from where the running lights stopped at the back of the stock combo area. So what I have to do is hook that up to the red wire because technically it is a positive wire. So the white is the negative and I'm gonna I'm gonna have to hook up to this one right here. I'm not gonna film all this, but I'll show you the final product. Okay, I got them hooked up. I don't have that closed yet, but what I've learned from this project is a lot of stuff can go wrong. And so you might as well not close everything up until you completely see that light on. So, you guys are wondering how I turn the lights on. If you're plugged into shore power, you have this plug and your trailer is wired correctly. Sometimes it's not. I've seen this not work on some people's trailer. But you got this top notch that is for plugging into your truck truck bed. Right here. This top notch. What you do is you take a fuse. It really doesn't matter the size. And you go in to the top and the bottom. There's a charging one that's always live from the shore power. And goes around and lights up the running lights. So, you step out here, running lights are on, fingers crossed that the one we just messed with is on, and it is. Make sure it doesn't look too dim. Sometimes it looks dim, but it's just pointing down, so we're good. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in here. I like to put that light in to where it doesn't rip up any of the rubber on the top of the grommet there and just kind of twist and then pop it right in so okay I'm losing daylight I think I can maybe get one more situated here so I'm gonna go ahead and drill another hole and whenever I stop, I'm just going to cover the hole with duct tape. So, kind of my rain prevention right now. So, 
let's go ahead and move on to the okay this one i got the wire through a lot easier um everything went pretty smoothly except for the soldering part the wind really made these hard to solder so anyways i got them done got the rubber grommet in i got a clamp on both of these now i started using clamps because i do not want to lose my wire inside of there if you guys are wondering why why do i have so much slack for well i'd rather have too much than not enough and if i ever need to replace these i want to be able to pull it out and maintenance it right here like i can just you know work on it very easily with it out of the uh out of the trailer so it should make my life pretty easy when i have to if i ever have to replace them in the future i'll leave a link down in the description below for these lights i really like them so far um i put some on my truck so far they seem to be working well the ones that are that came on the trailer are not this nice they're um they're garbage so really didn't last that long they probably only have like oh two thousand three thousand hours on it so the life of these is supposed to be 10 or fifteen thousand. i can't remember i'll have to look online and i'll put a i'll put what it is on the screen right now but yeah it's either 10 or fifteen thousand. so i'm gonna go ahead and shove this in Nice and gently. Bring you guys in here. I like to. Hopefully you guys can see that, but I like to. Come in from the top right here. And then kind of shimmy my way in there. Try not to tear up the rubber too much. All right. Like I said, I'm gonna put duct tape over that one. All right, dim front lights. Really bright back lights. Only made it two lights tonight. I'm gonna say that this does take a lot of time. Um, I think it's definitely gonna go smoother. I know the second light was way easier than the first one, but uh. But yeah, I'm just doing this after work, trying to uh, fit it in when I can. And we're in South Texas, so it doesn't rain too much here. Although we actually have been fighting the rain. So that's kind of why I duct taped that one. But uh, so far, that looks freaking awesome. I can't wait till to, can't wait to see it run the whole length of the trailer. Thought I'd better give you guys an update and pick up the camera today. Um, I was looking into that light just to see what was going on. And so far I got four of these wired. I'm getting ready to hook up the lights. I'll, uh, start getting these wired up and report back later. I've really been debating about caulking these. Um, you know, these are... These are meant for, these are meant to be waterproof, but I feel like I probably need to take that extra safety factor over the living quarters to actually make sure that this thing doesn't leak into the living quarters and destroy uh, the wood and all that stuff in there and cause a, a really expensive fix. So um, I'm losing daylight. I'm going to put caulking around all the lights and then I'm going to shove them in and then I'll show you the final product. That one uh, over here, the front one is still an existing one that's going dim. Um, once I get those new lights in, I'll I'll start replacing all those. So let's uh let's get them in there. Hey guys, it's so windy that I ended up taking this 
this Pepsi box and uh, putting putting light in it so I can actually get the lighter in there and make the soldering connection. This uh, worked a lot better than it did yesterday because uh, I wasted a lot of time trying to trying to get that soldered yesterday. So this is the last one. Let me get it soldered up. All right, guys. Here's the final product. If you guys are wondering why I'm not doing all this to the bottom is because I've replaced the bottom two that are somewhat in the frame and you have to drill through some really thick metal. I could probably figure it out. Um, it's just would be a harder project than doing it up top. Um, anyways, I, I'm probably not going to get too carried away on the bottom ones. The top look, the top look line is what I was going for anyways, so. Let's see, I think there's about 13 to 14 more lights to go before I'm completed. Hey guys, new day, I wanted to give you an update. I got the three existing ones pulled out, ready to cut and replace. I drilled new holes. So we're gonna have five across there. Everything's evenly spaced. I really like the way it looks. So we're gonna end up with five across there, which will match the five that are on the truck. And then that one over there needs replaced. And I'm gonna place that one around the corner, but I'm gonna leave that one alone right there. Um, not until I get the ones up the side there finished because uh, I'm still debating on that area right there, but I don't want to plug that one up right now, so I'm leaving that one alone. Easiest snake job so far. So I'm, the wire's right there, but I'm not gonna tap into it. I'm just gonna daisy chain it into this one. I wanna be able to pull them out, maybe uh, be able to replace them in the future. A little side comment for you is you know every night I'm doing this project I'm fighting daylight and what I've been doing at night when it's dark out or while I'm watching TV or something this part right here goes usually goes like all the way to the end right here these come out of the package like this and what I do is I get them all prepped and ready I strip some of this back and get it looking like this that way it's easy, ready to go and hooked up and I don't have to mess with it up here while I'm trying to get things done quickly in the daylight. So, so you're dealing with so many different wire changes, it's not a bad idea to check these. Yep, so white to black and black to yellow. So white to black has been the theme this whole time and I've been constantly thinking to myself, tuxedo black and white to tuxedo so that way I don't forget I'm trying not to forget that all right let's wire this up there might be rain on the horizon so I'm gonna hurry up and put some caulking around this grommet and you just put the tiniest little bead around it it doesn't take as much as I'm putting on, honestly. And you just kinda let it all squish together. Uh oh, it's starting to sprinkle.
let me give you guys a quick update this side has been a little bit more difficult because there's more wires so you gotta really make sure you don't drill into the the wires that are in there so that took a lot of work and then fishing it's a little bit harder because of all the wires and some insulation too but anyways i almost have four actually technically i almost have three installed i got like three more to go i was gonna mention if you guys can use your truck it's a great platform to uh do some of this work on you just might need an additional step but luckily my my truck bed's 12 feet so it allows me to work on a lot of lights at once and then i'm kind of hopping between that ramp and the truck right here getting all this work done gave you guys some ideas if you want to try this um, like I said at the beginning of the video it's on you it's on your trailer you're gonna have to figure out how to do this for your trailer so this is what worked for mine hopefully it works for yours thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed this stuff and my wife and I live in this trailer full-time and travel all over the country with it and uh, so make sure you subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends if you found it useful I will see you on the next Red Beard Outdoors episode. Catch you guys later.